The conclusion of every NBA season, the NBA reveals its top five players in the all NBA first team, second team, and third teams. And I thought, what a great concept to begin a series covering each individual WWE era and defining which were the five superstars that were at the top of their game and helped solidify that era in itself. If you guys haven't already seen my previous videos of the golden era and the new generation era, please make sure to go back and watch those videos so that way you can enjoy this Attitude Era video in its entirety. And of course, since you're already on the way, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to follow up-to-date content pro wrestling-wise on this channel. Now with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into the Attitude Era. Now judging by the t-shirt that I'm wearing, you can obviously tell who was the very first selection for the all WWE team in the Attitude Era. That being said, the Attitude Era ran from 1997 all the way to 2001 at the conclusion of WrestleMania 17. And a center focal point of that era, of course, was a Stone Cold Steve Austin. He helped usher in a new and exciting boom period, not unlike what Hulk Hogan did in the 80s. But Stone Cold Steve Austin, not only in his presence, the aura, the mic work, the wrestling work, the storytelling, he was the whole total package. Stone Cold Steve Austin on any team, on any Mount Rushmore, should be at the top of that list. His rivalries against the likes of Mr. McMahon, The Rock, and Triple H are what helped define the Attitude Era in its entirety. In retrospect, when creating this video, I feel like it was very easy to select the five individuals. The Attitude Era, of course, being one of the most successful eras in pro wrestling history, had its key players. And as I mentioned, Stone Cold Steve Austin was one of them. How could I not name his number one adversary, The Rock? The Rock who has gone on to become one of the most successful icons, not only in pro wrestling, but in Hollywood, essentially. It was at this point that he would win the WWE title several times over, having rivalries with the likes, as I mentioned, Stone Cold Steve Austin and Triple H that again helped define what the era would become. He would use this opportunity to become one of the top guys and then usher in himself into Hollywood, transitioning into one of the biggest icons of all time. But not only in terms of his in-ring work, but also his mic work, he's really solidified himself as one of the all-time greats. I look at The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin as the pillars of what this era was, and you can easily take those two and place them on any Mount Rushmore. As for our next selection in the all-WWE Attitude Era team, who could I say other than The Undertaker? The Undertaker, who was previously mentioned in the New Generation Era team, had really stepped out into his own when it came to the Attitude Era. He had two separate personas, beginning with the Attitude Era's version of his new gimmick, the Ministry of Darkness, where it tackled a more cult-like, demonic version of the Dead Man. And although he would suffer an injury and his groin and have to leave for several months, he would return with the American Badass gimmick, a more realistic take on who Mark Calloway was as a person. He would maintain dominance and prestige over the locker room for the next few years. And it's no wonder why in a list like this, you have to mention the Deadman. The Undertaker, no matter the era, was always a level of importance and served as the benchmark and the measuring stick as to what it meant to be a top guy. And speaking of top guys, I would be remiss to not mention Triple H, who stepped out as a protege of Shawn Michaels in D-Generation X, then becoming the leader of D-Generation X, and then eventually winning the WWE Championship again multiple times over. He became a top heel star, feuding with The Rock, feuding with Stone Cold Steve Austin, and the next individual who I will name in a moment. But his career-defining moments came in the year 2000, when he really stepped up when Stone Cold Steve Austin suffered his neck injury and was forced to be out for a year. That would allow The Rock to step in as the lead babyface and in need of a heel to battle with, and that's when Triple H would step in. Obviously, we'd see how his career would play out. He would earn the name of multiple nicknames such as The Game, The Cerebro Assassin, The King of Kings, among others as well. But Triple H in this era, this is when he really came out and became the top guy that we've always liked. And of course, as for the fifth and final member, I did hint at him when he feuded with Triple H. They would go on to have iconic battles on Monday Night Raw and having a street fight at the 2000 Royal Rumble. Following that, they'd have a Hell in a Cell match at No Way Out 2000, and he would even become a member of the four wrestlers who would main event WrestleMania 2000s. Of course, I am referring to Mick Foley. Now, whether you want to include him as Dude Love, Cactus Jack, or Mankind, no matter the gimmick and no matter the character, Mick Foley was always top tier. He was able to get us invested in not only him, but what he was doing as a character. Mick Foley is a Hall of Famer tenfold. He earned his spot on this list, not only because he would deliver quality stories, but would also deliver 
quality matches that really resonate with us to this day. You can immediately think to matches like the Hell in a Cell 1998 matchup at King of the Ring as well as a Boiler Room Brawl with The Undertaker and the previously Triple H's matches that I mentioned. Again, as I said, this was probably the easiest list to make because the Attitude Era was just so heavy in moments, so heavy in iconic moments that included any variation of these five. And of course, in terms of honorable mentions, I did leave off guys like a Kurt Angle, guys like Kane. And I even considered putting Vince McMahon on this list, but I wanted to go ahead and keep it secluded just to pro wrestling talent. Although Mr. McMahon has had matches, I wouldn't define him as a pro wrestler, just more of an on-screen character. But what do you guys think? Do you guys believe that these were the best five selected for the all WWE team in the Attitude Era? Who would you leave? Who would you take off on this list? And if you have a better list, go ahead and drop it down below in the comments. Of course, my list isn't the best list, but it's my opinion. And if you guys enjoy these videos in this new format of the Generations All WWE Team, please go ahead and like, share, and subscribe to keep up to date with these videos. Of course, you can follow me by selecting the subscribe button here and for choosing one of the videos below on your left side. With that being said, thank you for watching the video and I will see you guys next week as we cover the Ruthless Aggression era running from 2002 to 2008.